So, you know, I already talked about the tabletop game some time ago, but I think it's time I talked about what probably more people care about, and that's the video game. Being real with all of you, Chiefs, tabletop games are in fact my passion, sure, but video games, I like them just as much, and people tend to like video games much more than tabletop games, but I digress. So, I'm making a VTMB video, and there's lots of other people who made videos about Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. It's a great game. It's an amazing game. It's an amazingly broken game, and you could buy it on Steam and other places, so it's not that hard to find. Maybe the hard copy is, I'm not sure, but any other version of it, digital or otherwise, you could find it easily. No big deal. Games to this day still cite VTMB to be an inspiration for writing quest lines, stories, and characters, despite this game being the broken mess that it is. It got all those things right. I mean, look at Cyberpunk 2077. Yes, I know, Cyberpunk 2077. I personally enjoyed it. They got a lot of inspiration from how VTMB operated. There's a lot of parallels when it comes to both. Both are tabletop games, believe it or not. Both are first-person shooters, and both have branching paths and non-linear gameplay. And both are extremely broken at launch. Anyway, so enough about Cyberpunk 2077 because this video isn't about that as much as I love Mike Pondsmith and the Cyberpunk universe. It's about VTMB. Why was it so great? Why am I looking back on it? Why should you care? Well, obviously you care about what I think and you need someone to tell you what opinion you obviously need to have. I'm joking, of course. Okay, so what is Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines? To quote Wikipedia, because that's the free encyclopedia that anyone can reference, VTMB is a 2004 action role-playing game developed by Troika Games and published by Activision for Microsoft Windows. Set in White Wolf Publishing, I can't say that. Set in White Wolf Publishing's World of Darkness, the game is based on White Wolf's role-playing game Vampire the Masquerade and follows a human who is killed and revived as a fledgling vampire. The game depicts the fledglings journey through the early 21st century Los Angeles, it did say through the early, to uncover the truth behind a recently discovered relic that heralds the end of all vampires. End quote. God, I, I really stumped, stammered through that. Holy shit. Everyone knows Activision by now, but Troika? Hmm. Troika had only made three games, with a fourth that was in production. Those three games were of course VTMB, Arcanum of Steamworks and Magic Obscura, and The Temple of Elemental Evil. I know next to nothing about those other two games other than Arcanum is actually pretty damn good. The fourth game that they were trying to work on, believe it or not, was their bid at making Fallout 3, but good old Toddy Howard outbid their asses. But we're not here to complain about God, Howard. Who's laughing now? We're here to talk about vampires. But God, can you imagine if Troika got the, their hands on Fallout 3? That would've been awesome, actually. Holy shit. VTMB was set on an early version of the Source Engine, and they were under contractual obligations set by Valve not to release their game before Half-Life 2. 18 months into development, they finally were able to announce they were working on the game since Valve graciously revealed HL2 to the public. When all was said and done, VTMB came out on the same day as Half-Life 2, and you also have to realize that it, the games that it was competing with uh, on top of Half-Life were also things like Metal Gear Solid 3 and fucking Halo 2. You think competing against Half-Life on the same day it released is bad, now you have Halo 2 that you're also competing with, who, just like the original Half-Life did, changed the face of video games for years, for better or for worse. It's a recipe for disaster from a commercial standpoint. It doesn't help that VTMB was Troika's third and subsequently last game they ever released. No one really knew who they were, and because of the tight release date and schedule, they didn't have the time to fix everything that they needed to in the span of time allotted by Activision, so they released a completely broken, buggy ass mess that people stuck with and improved. Quite literally, it is not recommended you play VTMB in its vanilla state. In fact, I doubt anyone I know has tried playing the game in its original state. They always go straight for the fan patch.
So, we might as well get this out of the way first, and I know this is totally going to make this game look bad, but trust me, the game isn't as bad as it really sounds. I just personally like ripping the band-aid off first. As I said, the game is very buggy. It is... and I can't stress this enough. Really. 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 Really buggy. The vanilla version of the game is absolutely broken. Now, I'll be completely honest with you, I never play the game purely vanilla as does literally the entire community. Now, they may play the game in a vanilla state, i.e. no mods, but the patch everyone uses is a patch made by the fans of the game, not Troika. It does add some con content and stuff like that. Barring that though, the game is still buggy. Maybe it's due to the fact that it's an old version of Source. Valve's source engine that runs with HL2 is not the same source engine that runs with VTMB. It may seem like it, it may sort of feel like it, but it definitely isn't. People can't port shit from this game into source, it all gets completely broken. Despite this fact though, and despite being an early version of source, the game doesn't run super poorly, and I think it might be in part of the fan patch. I don't really encounter crashes ever, and everything's pretty much buttery smooth. Especially now that my computer is running a game that's nearly... Oh god. 20 years old. Oh my god. Existential dread aside, there's minor bugs. You're probably going to have to use no clip a lot because you might simply get stuck somewhere and can't advance. I use it sparingly and I use it if I don't feel like dealing with certain parts of the game. Don't judge me because I've played this game to death and I don't really care if I need to play the game entirely as intended. On honestly, you might actually have to use god mode on occasion and that's because combat in this game is absolute ass, and some parts of the game are nigh fucking impossible. And I'm not joking. A reviewer had to say that they used god mode to get through parts of it too. And this is around the time when reviewers weren't entirely dog shit, and you could actually get your news and reviews from magazines and articles on the internet, not people who have journalism degrees and can't get hired by any legitimate news sources. Insults aside, they're right. And the end of the game is combat heavy to the point that if you didn't spec your character's combat stats right, you would be absolutely screwed. Firearms are pretty much useless in a lot of cases, melee being the way to go in almost every case besides the end of the game. And you best be starting specking early because if you don't, you'll be left playing catch up or cheating. So yeah, I listed off a bunch of stuff that's bad. Like I said, I should get that stuff out of the way because, well, it's important. And like I said before, it's almost like a band-aid, you know? Every game people love has its low points and points that are factually terrible. Like, it is a fact that VTMB's combat sucks, it is a fact that the game is buggy, and it is a fact that I procrastinated writing this because I've been busy with real-life stuff and doubt myself constantly. Okay, we're getting a little bit too real. But with the bad stuff gone so soon, it frees up time for me to talk about the good stuff, and boy does VTMB make up for it. The writing's great, the level design is mostly good, the music's great, the characters are amazing, all the side quests feel like large stories, and the main quest is pretty memorable. So the easiest thing to talk about is level and sound design. Every area is unique, every area oozes grungy, sleazy style, every club you enter has a unique vibe and feel to it, outside of all of them being goth clubs, honestly. I mean, I'm, I'm living for it. I, I live for those goth club vibes, I, I, I miss them so, uh, so much. But regardless, every hub world, every level, every place feels lived in. It feels real. In that 2004, not even Half-Life source sort of way, it surprisingly holds up well, despite how old everything is. Look, I ate up anything goth. In fairness, I still do. You slap some industrial or dark wave on that shit, I'm going to buy it up. Perfect, there we go. See, I'd buy that shit. But yeah, VTMB has that early 2000s mall goth aesthetic that makes me weep. Not that shit we see today. No, that shit just 
it's dressed up beyond belief. No, I'm talking about like the mall goth where you walked around looking like this. Most of the time, you look dumb as hell, but it didn't matter because baby, you were listening to some fresh VMV Nation and sporting that nine inch nails shirt you cop from Hot Topic, or it may have been like corn or something like Slipknot, but I give corn a pass, uh, Slipknot, um, no, not, not so much. Limp Biscuit, however, we all know how goth Fred Durst is. Regardless, VTMB has got that vibe, but a bit cooler. And it was all around when the vampire craze was going hard. Like, we got Blade, we got Underworld, of which White Wolf actually sued. Queen of the Damned, Interview with a Vampire. Look, vampires were cool as shit before Twilight came out. But yeah, VTMB came out at like the perfect time it honestly fit that aesthetic perfectly and again i live for it and so do tons of other people and i was so attractive to it you have a bunch of bands one of which is a big name making music for it i mean they got ministry to make a song just for this game they're major they also had lacuna coil in there too for like the ending song you know well spoiler but they were pretty big at the time but i i really don't know and if anyone who knows who Lacuna, I mean, if you know who Lacuna Coil is, let me know, because I'd be surprised, because none of my friends know who Lacuna Coil is. Anyway, look at the quest, notably the Ghost House, which I'm sure everyone remembers, and obviously almost every journalism outlet talks about the Ghost House. It was even named one of the best quests of all time as well. It was spooky, really spooky. Not for me now, of course. I've played VTMB so much I kind of blow through the quests in like a, f a few minutes. I'm like speedrunning it or whatever the hell. But if you're not me and you haven't played the game before, then of course it's going to be a bit on the unsettling side for you. I'm not going to spoil it for you because I shouldn't. If you found this video because you're an avid fan of the game to begin with, you already know the quests as well as I do or should so. But everyone talks about that one. What about uncovering the snuff film ring? While I won't get too deep into the story just yet, because again, spoilers, despite the, this particular quest being combat heavy, I found the story of this one intriguing all the way through. I wanted to see where this would take me next. And what about the quest where you have to help another kindred to suppress someone from revealing the existence of vampires in their upcoming screenplay? It's all wrapped up nicely in this early 2000s Los Angeles that feels sleazy as all hell. Trust me, I grew up in early 2000s Los Angeles. It's just as sleazy as it feels. But don't look to this game for being locationally accurate, it really isn't. Downtown doesn't look like downtown Los Angeles at all, and despite it feeling like a place that is definitely sleazy and cramped, it's oddly devoid of cars and traffic to the wee hours of the night. Santa Monica has the pier at least. Hollywood? I, I give it that. It feels like Hollywood. Don't look like it, but it feels like it. The Hollywood I know at least. Everyone thinks Hollywood's this cool place where all these stars are and all this other stuff, which don't get me wrong, it usually is, but Hollywood's also kind of shit and not one of the nicest places on the planet. So I mean, VTMB's got that vibe perfect. In Chinatown, however, it does not look like this at all. It's, I mean, it is small, I suppose, but it definitely isn't this. Aesthetics aside, the characters, oh boy, the characters. They're all quirky, unique, and all have personality. No one was the same, and their designs are all striking. Now, this is going to include some spoilers, to, so, you know, skip to this time to avoid them. I'll give you some time. So, uh, don't worry about it, you know? So, uh, how are you today? Mm, I, I mean, I'm doing alright, I guess. I mean, you know how it is, you know how it be. Kind of procrastinated on this video. Yeah, you know, the usual... How's the kids? Oh, you don't... Mmm. I didn't know. You still with us? That's good. One of the most memorable characters I think everyone remembers is Jeanette and Therese Vorm and those two, or well, one. I love the whole thing and the surprise that they were always the same person didn't... They did actually surprise me. I didn't realize that at all. I did guess that they were the same person, but they do play it up quite a lot as if they aren't. With the pictures on the walls and how no one knows their secret and how they're constantly bicker like, well, sisters. Was it shocking? 
Eh, no, not really, but it was still a twist to me. Obviously, with all the playthroughs I've done, it doesn't surprise me much anymore. Those two are now a constant in the tabletop universe, believe it or not. They were very popular. And, uh, yeah, who knows? They may show up in the new game, but that's if it ever comes out. And what about the side quest? A bounty for the hunter. The character, Stanley Gimble, the main villain of this quest, even though you only really meet him once and subsequently, like, beat the shit out of him and kill him, he's memorably creepy. Cutting off his own limbs to put on prosthesis on himself and stealing people away to use for his experiments. And that quest still sticks out in my mind. It was simple, sure, and relatively quick, but it was enough for me to remember Gimbal and all the stuff associated with him. Then there's the in-game radio station, KTRK, with its late night radio host, the Deb of Night. You can't actually tune into the station at any time, it plays on nearby radios and stereos, but you could sit and listen to the station and her show. People call in like any other late night show and bother her with weird crazy shit, and she just takes it. it comes to a point where a vampire you meet towards the end of the game, Andre, calls in and... I haven't felt that way since Brad Pitt got married. <laughs> Do you have any idea how insignificant you are? When they start devouring the world, you will be but a bloodstain on their capes. I bet you say that to all the girls. There is a red star in the night sky. The blood of mortals and the blood of ages all will be consumed. They are coming. These are the final nights. Okay, well, good luck in the next election, Senator. <laughs> Deb just takes it like a champ, probably figuring that this guy is just some crazy dude, like all of her callers. You don't even really see this character ever, but you, you never interact with her, and it's pretty easy to miss her show entirely. But they just packed her with so much personality that they really didn't even need to. I've sat in my shitty vampire apartment sometimes listening to her radio show while I was doing other stuff in real life just for the ambience and aesthetic. It's these little things that really bring VTMB to life. Look, I'm not done with the spoilers. You think I was done? No. I'm not. When am I ever done? What about the vampire clans? In fairness, they all play the same, let's face it. Save for two of them, Nosferatu and Malkavian. Now, those two are definitely not recommended if you're new to the game, especially Malkavian. Nosferatu, you could probably eke by, but it takes a lot of knowledge of where things are and where stuff is to really get around. You'll be stuck roaming the sewers to avoid contact with people or else they'll be repulsed by you to the point where they're gonna call the cops. So if you ever feel super ugly and super alone, just know you don't get the cops called on you for being a hideous creature. So I mean, that should make you feel a little bit better about yourself. If sewer levels are not your thing, Thing, the Nosferatu is not for you. However, there's the Malkavians. Now they're fun, and they're spoilerific. Malkavians are insane, literally. They'd be more confusing for players who've picked them up first before anything. You're gonna hear stuff coming in through your speakers, or well, headphones. You're gonna get unsettled. It's gonna be vague. Your character is going to freak other people out, human and vampire alike. Unless, of course, they're another Malkavian. You also have interactions with things like your TV and a random stop sign. You even get your own secret ending, which is... <sighs> it's silly. Again, big warning though, if you're gonna play Malkavian, you best have played the game through as any other clan, even Nosferatu. If you don't mind playing an old game and already like RPGs, then obviously this is a game you should totally play, especially if you're already planning on getting VTMB 2 when it eventually, eventually comes out. There's a reason why this game is so fondly remembered, referenced, and played to this day. There hasn't really been any other game out there with this level of style and gameplay that does the vampire genre justice. This game sets a high bar for storytelling that I feel a lot of companies feel like they're probably playing catch up when it comes to how well they tell their own. Now in fairness, 
This game is probably not for everybody as it is relatively dated, and I know there's swaths of people out there who will refuse to touch games because they're old. Why they do that is beyond me as I think simply refusing to play old games due to crap graphics or whatever is stupid, but I will give a pass for this game in particular because this game is kinda unplayable towards the end. And if you're personally morally opposed to cheating of any kind or the thought of that inevitably irks you in any way, I get it. The combat definitely isn't great, and I will say it isn't the majority of the game. There's plenty of reasons why a game, no matter how good it may be, isn't for someone, and that's okay. Unless, of course, it's the former reason, then you're wrong and you should be banished into the Shadow Realm for all eternity. So that one took a while, didn't it? Sorry about the long wait, it does take me a bit of time to do these videos between my real life endeavors, it's hard to keep up. But since this one came out and with the moderate-ish success of my Star Wars Galaxies video, I'm going to be doing videos a bit more frequently, or at least I'll try to. I do have a Discord now by the way, the link is going to be in the description. I'd love to have you around. Come hang out, talk to me, talk to some of my friends, I think you're gonna have a good time. I've caught up on drugs so much, I don't think I can come down, I really don't.